Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. I am Professor Anjali Pal from Civil Engineering Department, uh, IIT Kharagpur. I will be covering the Environmental Chemistry part, and this is my fifth lecture on acids, bases, and salts. In this lecture, I will cover the determination of acidity and alkalinity which often we uh, do in our laboratories uh, and uh, it is very important to know for environmental engineers to know uh, the acidity and alkalinity for a particular sample. Uh, I will discuss that in my this uh, lecture. Uh, acidity we know that acidity uh, may come from different sources. Uh, and acidity may be of mainly uh, in environmental purpose it may be mainly of uh, two types. One is the strong acidity uh, like uh, mineral acidity and uh, another is the carbon dioxide uh, acidity uh, that is uh, coming from the atmosphere uh, and from biological oxidation of organic matter particularly in the polluted uh, water also we can see that this type of acidity comes. Uh, and mineral acidity uh, is nothing but uh, the strong acids uh, coming from the strong acids that it uh, like HCl, H2SO4, HNO3. It may come from industrial uh, waste um, due to oxidation of sulfur or sulfides under bacterial action or it may come from uh, combustion of fossil fuels um, <coughs> because of the formation of carbon dioxide. Now, what is the significance of acidity? Acid waters are corrosive and also uh, in many treatment uh, pr procedures uh, such, per, such, uh, such as the biological treatments, <coughs> we have to uh, maintain the pH uh, in some range say for example, pH 6 to 9.5. So, we have to monitor the acidity uh, very often and uh, time to time. So, uh, uh, so, it is very important to know the acidity. Now, the causes of acidity uh, as is shown here uh, in details say for example, there is an organic compound like uh, glucose when it is oxidized this is nothing but that BOD reaction we all know that in presence of uh, bacteria uh, aerobic bacteria it produces uh, carbon dioxide which is uh, one type of acidity or uh, in presence of ana anaerobic bacteria also uh, some type of reaction may occur uh, for uh, organic compounds. Uh, here also we can see that carbon dioxide may be generated. Otherwise, and under anaerobic uh, uh, condition with some bacteria uh, the same molecule can be uh, may, may be converted to uh, several weak acids say for example, acetic acid, um, uh, propionic acid or formic acid. Uh, so, these are also weak acids and uh, some salts you know some salts we have already learnt about salts some salts this is a salt uh, ferric chloride say for example, or aluminum sulphate upon hydrolysis can produce uh, some acids. This is uh, like weak base you know this, uh, this is also insoluble and uh, this is HCl you know it is completely dissociated. So, it gives acidity uh, similarly here H2SO4 is produced. So, it gives acidity. So, acidity may be uh, may be different types and we have to know different types how much is present different types of acidity what is present what is present how much is present and what is the effect all those things uh, fall under the environmental chemistry. Okay. Now, determination of acidity we know that uh, we use usually in the laboratory which is very simple 
and uh, uh, we can do it by titrimetric method just using some buried pipette and by using by proper choice of some indicator. Okay. The indicator that knowledge also we, you got uh, in the previous lecture that the choice of indicator is very important. So, here we will see some application how we can choose the indicator. So, for example, you have a sample which you have some uh, which uh, uh, contains some acidity. Okay. So, acidity, but you have to determine how much is the carbon dioxide acidity and how much is the mineral acidity. How will you do it? Okay. Uh, first, you take um, some uh, definite volume of sample. Okay. Sample say for example, 100 milliliter of your sample in a uh, conical flask. Okay. And in the bu rate you take some standard alkali solution. Now, uh, uh, first you first you add uh, a few drops of methyl orange indicator in the conical flask in the solution that you have taken uh, in the conical flask you add a few drops of methyl orange. Now, if it is acidic uh, solution then the methyl orange will give the pinkish red color I told you that methyl orange gives pinky, pinkish red color in acid. So, it will be pinkish red color and then you start your titration. Uh, with addition of alkali standard alkali solution from the burette. Now, at the equivalence point at the neutralization point, okay, so uh, uh, the color will be changing the, uh, the color of the indicator will be changing from uh, pinkish red to uh, yellow when you reach the equilibrium point and at this point my question is at this point what is neutralized at this point. Uh, the only the mineral acid is neutralized neutralized only mineral acids are neutralized at this point because methyl orange changes its color in the range of 3.7 to 4.3 in this range it changes its color so in this at this point you know uh, where you get the change of color of the indicator here only mineral acids are neutralized now you throw the sample uh, sample and then you take another lot of sample in the conical flask and then uh, you add this time you add uh, phenophthalene indicator okay now phenophthalene indicator you know that it gives uh, it is colorless in acid and it is uh, pink in uh, alkaline okay so you have added uh, uh, phenophthalene in the acidic solution so you will see it is colorless and then you start your uh, titration okay then from the uh, burette you are adding the uh, sodium hydroxide solution standard sodium hydroxide solution now at the end point uh, it will become pink because we know phenophthalene gives pink color pink color in alkali so pink color you will get and then you will reach the uh, you can say that the the uh, acidity is neutralized now at this point wh what is neutralized the question is that at phenophthalene end, end point what is neutralized at this point both mineral acid as well as carbon dioxide is neutralized so phenophthalene gives you the total acidity okay phenophthalene when you use phenophthalene indicator you will get the total acidity acidity okay everything is neutralized and when you add methyl orange as the indicator you will get only mineral acidity okay and then if you subtract the mineral acidity from the total acidity then you will get the carbon dioxide acidity it is very simple. So, you see that two most common indicators phenophthalene and methyl orange by using these two indicators you can easily determine the uh, two types of acidity in your water sample and uh, also you can determine the carbon dioxide acidity uh, very simple. But as I told you that methyl orange uh, little typical uh, uh, typical uh, indicator you need a few more uh, means trial uh, to understand how the color change is happening and actually what is the neutralization point and uh, but it is easy it is easy only a few trials are needed. Now comes the, uh, the unit how will you express the acidity. Uh, you learned that acidity and basicity it is related to pH. So, should we express in terms of pH? Should we express in terms of normality or what? Actually, the it is um, universally accept, accepted that acidity 
we must uh, in environmental point of view uh, acidity we have to express in terms of milligram per liter of calcium carbonate. Acidity, alkalinity and hardness these three things we should express in terms of milligram per liter of calcium carbonate. Okay. Now, then how is the calculation? So, acidity first you have to determine the using the normal formula simple most simple formula V 1 S 1 equal to V 2 S 2. Okay. V 1 S 1 equals to V 2 S 2. Here S 1 is in normality term. So, um, first you use that then once you know the normality then you have to convert it in terms of milligram per liter of calcium carbonate and this is very easy to do by using this formula. So, why 50 is coming because 50 is the equivalent weight of calcium carbonate. Okay. The uh, molecular weight of calcium carbonate is 100 and uh, the calcium the calcium has valency 2 and um, one only one calcium is there that is why uh, you have to divide the molecular weight by 2. So, it is the equivalent weight of calcium carbonate is 50 and why the 1000 is coming, 1000 is coming because you have to express in terms of milligram that is why 1000 term is coming. So, it is very simple formula by which n is the normality of NaOH, A is the milliliter of NaOH that you have used in during your titration and this is the milliliter of sample taken. Say for example, you have taken 100 milliliter or if you have taken 200 milliliter. So, this is the milliliter of sample taken during the titration. So, this is a very simple calculation. Now, comes the uh, alkalinity say similar uh, similarly alkalinity determination is also very very important. Now, what is the sources uh, and nature of alkalinity? Sources uh, you see here that we know that there are three types of alkalinity. What are the three types? OH minus ion which is giving alkalinity, carbonate ion which also can give alkalinity and bicarbonate ion which also can give alkalinity. Okay. What is the how the uh, bicarbonate is formed? You know that uh, carbonate bearing rocks uh, when they react with carbon dioxide in presence of water they can give bicarbonate. We, uh, we know all those things um, when the hardness is formed uh, bicarbonate is uh, some type of uh, means uh, um, uh, in hardness also calcium bicarbonate we know that uh, it is giving hardness. So, we know that how the hardness is also generated anyway. So, here the um, we are talking about alkalinity. So, there are basically three types of alkalinity. So, how the alkalinity is coming the some salts like phosphate silicate okay, phosphate say for example, sodium phosphate. If we think about sodium phosphate it is a salt, but it is a salt of strong base and weak acid. So, so sodium phosphate when it is dissolved then it is giving alkalinity why because uh, it is coming from strong base and weak acid. So, it will generate alkalinity similarly silicate okay, and borate humic acid all those um, salts salts of all those uh, acids will give uh, alkalinity okay. and in polluted or anaerobic water salts of weak acid such as acetic acid. So, salts of weak acid uh, acetic acid means sodium acetate, sodium propionate, uh, sodium uh, sulphide okay. all those things sodium sulphide say for example, uh, H2S is a weak acid and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So, sodium sulphide will generate alka uh, alkalinity. Okay. So, these all contribute to alkalinity and highly alkaline uh, waters are unpalatable that also we know. Uh, acidity or alkalinity we cannot tolerate it has some uh, some limit okay tolerable limit now uh, this this titration is even more interesting than the uh, than the uh, determination of acidity uh, how it will be determined although the the indicators are the same indicators are the same but uh, uh, the titration is very interesting okay so as I told you there are three types of alkalinity OH minus and carbonate and bicarbonate. You have to uh, remember one thing here that uh, that OH minus and bicarbonate these two things cannot stay together. These two things OH minus and bicarbonate these two these two alkalinity cannot stay together. Why? It is a common sense why 
because OH minus immediately will react with bicarbonate to form water and carbonate. So, these two things cannot stay together. Now, um, this thing you have to keep in mind. Now, say for example, I have a sample uh, water sample which I want to know what is the alkalinity of this um, of this solution. What I will do? So, I will take uh, say 100 milliliter of the sample in the uh, in the uh, conical flask. Okay. Then uh, first I will add uh, a few drops of uh, phenophthalene indicator there. When I add a few drops of phenophthalene indicator, then um, because it is um, say for example, it is alkaline, if it is alkaline, then it may give uh, pink color, okay? alkaline. So, it will give pink color because phenophthalene gives pink color in uh, alkaline water. Okay? Then uh, I will start uh, the titration. Uh, I will start the titration uh, by taking the acid in the burette. So, I will add from the burette, I will add the standard acid solution in the conical flask uh, that is in the solution in the sample solution. Now, uh, what is the color of the indicator here? Because I have started with alkaline solution, so it may be pink. Okay? If it is pink, then I have I will start addition of acid. So, at the neutralization point it will be uh, it will be uh, colorless uh, it will be uh, colorless because I am titrating with acid. So, neutralization point will be colorless. Okay. Now, what is question is what is neutralized here? Okay. What is neutralized? There are different types of alkalinity. So, what is neutralized here? Here actually which minus is neutralized? and bicarbonate uh, and carbonate is neutralized half. So, it is the half neutralization of carbonate. Okay. So, uh, we have to remember that in at this point with phenophthalene uh, indicator, the whole amount of OH is neutralized and half of carbonate is neutralized. Bicarbonate is not yet neutralized. Okay. Carbonate is neutralized half. Okay. Now, what is the color here? it is colorless right it is colorless because we have already reached the equivalence point of phenophthalene okay so means pheno, um, using phenophthalene so here it is colorless so in this case you don't have to throw the solution you continue your titration only thing you have to note down how much volume of uh, uh, how much volume of acid you have added okay you note down then you now, you add methyl orange indicator here. Okay. You add methyl orange, so it is uh, it will show which color because you are determining the alkalinity. So, it will show the color of methyl orange uh, that alkaline in color that means it is yellow color okay. and then you are adding acid from the uh, burette. So, you continue your titration and then at the uh, neutralization point you will get the color of uh, methyl orange pinkish red that is the color in acid. Okay. At this point what is neutralized? At this point actually if there is bicarbonate that will be neutralized and the half remaining half of the carbonate will be neutralized. Okay. So, at the methyl orange indicate uh, that uh, end point you will get the whole amount of bicarbonate and the remaining portion that half portion of the carbonate you had already remaining that will be neutralized. Okay. So, by knowing then you have to know the volume that you have added. So, first time you have added uh, phenophthalene and you have noted down the volume required of the acid and second time from there you have continued the reaction uh, titration and then you have noted down the final end point what is the volume. By knowing these two, you can easily calculate how much is the OH minus, how much is the carbonate and how much is the bicarbonate easily. But one thing you have to remember that OH minus cannot stay together with bicarbonate. If you remember this, then you can easily calculate by knowing these two tartar values, you can easily calculate the the different types of alkalinity, alkalinity that is present in your water sample. This is very simple, uh, but very useful, useful, very useful. Now, as I told you that uh, for alkalinity also um, the unit uh, 
uh, we should use not the normality, not the pH, but we have to use the milligram per liter of calcium carbonate same way that we did for acidity. So, calculation is also uh, similar way. So, V 1 S 1 first you do the V 1 S 1 equals to V 2 S 2 and you get the normality. And then to convert the normality you can uh, multiply it with 50 and uh, 50 to get this uh, in terms of calcium carbonate. So, the formula is becoming alkalinity in terms of milligram per liter of cal uh, calcium carbonate is A is the volume of the acid used, N is the normality of the acid and 50 into into 50 into 1000 and uh, by the milliliter of sample taken. This, this depends on you whether you have taken uh, 100 milliliter sample or 200 milliliter sample or 250 milliliter sample whatever you have used you have to um, according to that uh, you have to uh, calculate. Okay. So, the, these two titrations are very very useful we often use uh, we often do uh, in our laboratory uh, and uh, very useful titrations uh, for environmental engineers as I uh, told you in the beginning um, uh, you, can you can also try it uh, very easily in your uh, simple laboratory only burette pipette and uh, only conical flask is required for this type of titration only two very common indicators uh, not rare indicator very common indicators phenolphthalein and methyl orange. Now, references for this entire uh, entire five lectures that is uh, uh, on acids, bases and salts uh, you can read from Pikedatta and uh, Pikedatta uh, 2000 uh, it is the general and inorganic chemistry. Uh, very common textbook uh, you can easily find it and you can read from that book and another book Saad, McCarthy and Parkin this chemistry for environmental engineering uh, this is also not costly book you can easily buy it also uh, for environmental engineering uh, course and um, you can read from this book also. Thank you very much.